Hey, Mesa. Uh, Mr. Holder here. Um, I wanted to show you a very cool thing in Illustrator that you can do called Image Trace. Uh, to get started with this, um, you want to go ahead and have Illustrator open. And the first thing that I would do, uh, consider doing is going to um, Google and looking up ink drawing or line art, uh, whatever you want to do to, to pull up something that, that looks cool. Or better yet, if you're going to do your own drawings, um, you want to ink it in uh, with something like a Sharpie so it looks very like clear cut in terms of the line art. And uh, you don't want to color in anything. Uh, I would avoid filling in things solid black. Um, so something like this would be really good. Uh, download that uh, to your computer or simply uh, uh, scan in or take a picture of your own line art after it's been inked in. So you have the ability in Illustrator to go in and turn in your drawing into vector. So um, rather than going into Illustrator and tracing over things with your pen tool, you can go in and use image trace if you can do this properly. So the idea is to get a good proper uh, image trace of it. And so as long as you have a, a good ink drawing, you can, you can get away with it. So um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it can save you uh, a lot of work in the long run uh, by avoiding having to use the pen tool. So the first thing that I like to do usually uh, with my line art and I'm going to close Batman here for a second and open up um, a different line art drawing. So here's the the one that you just saw on the internet. I went ahead and downloaded it and I'm going to zoom in on it and you'll see it's it's pixelated um, to a certain point. It is made up of pixels and we want it to be vector which is not made up of pixels so um, we want to get rid of that. So the first thing that I do is I want to make sure that everything is black and white absolutely sure so that's why I pull it into Photoshop first. So taking what you know a little bit about Photoshop, um, this first step is pretty easy. Um, I'm going to try to make some of these lines a little bit more clear cut and get rid of more of the gray areas um, like this piece of the hair here. So what I usually do is I go image adjustments levels and I will tighten up these levels a little bit making my black lines blacker and my white areas wider kind of blowing out um, any little pixels in between. So it's going to drop out some of the detail which is good because it'll give me a nice decent image trace. So I'm gonna pump this up a little bit. Uh, this takes a little bit of practice getting used to, um, but what you wanna do is drop out any gray pixels that you see and make sure it's just clearly black and white. So that's pretty good. Uh, the image was actually already uh, decent. To so the image was, it was already pretty good to begin with, but I wanna blow out all the gray, the gray pixels basically. So once I'm done doing my levels adjustment, I'm just gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna usually just go save and save over the original JPEG I downloaded. I'm not going to rename anything. I'm just going to hit OK and get this thing open in Illustrator now. So hopping over to Illustrator, I'm going to say File um, Open and I'm going to find this JPEG. Where'd you go JPEG? There it is. OK. And open that up. So it's still pixels. If I zoom in on it, you can see it's still made up of pixels. And I want to get this into a vector format. So what I do is I grab my Select tool and I select an image. So it's still an image. And I want to turn it into a vector that I can start to add colors to, etc. Uh, so I'm going to use this thing called Image Trace, which pops up um, by default at the top of your screen. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to select the image. And because it's just black and white, I'm going to simply pick black and white logo. And it's going to do its image trace. And so you're going to get different results. So this is a much, much more simplified version than the results that I'm looking for. Um, so I don't like the results. I'm going to hit Control Z and undo it and see if I can get a little bit better image trace out of this. And so to do this, I can bring up the image trace uh, dialog um, and um, and make some, you know, some better edits to it. So I could go uh, to a different, a couple of different places to do this. If I hit the button here, it's just going to do it by default. If I click one of these presets, it's going to do it by default. It's not giving me any settings uh, to adjust. So basically, I'm going to go to the object menu and instead go to image trace here and say make and it, and there you go it's it's applied it to it so what's happened now is it's given me the results like it did before but now i can go in here to my palette at the top and make some minor adjustments to this and so if i click advanced after this palette pops up i can adjust things like the threshold of this and see if it will trace a better result for me and so um, i'm just going to kind of continue to do that until i get better results. If you don't see anything happening with your tracing results, 
Well, that's actually worse, so I'm going to increase this back up. It might take a second for the computer to kind of redo its tracing of it, but each time you do it, because I have check um, preview off, it's going to it's going to do a little bit better. So I want to play around with my paths if I want maybe fewer paths or a higher amount of paths. So you can see there I get less paths here. If I go with a high amount of paths, it might actually do a better tracing. So now we're getting somewhere. It's looking a little bit better. I'm getting more of my detail back. So this is what you just need to like play around with a little bit. So I like the results I'm getting here. I'm getting a more simplified result, which is fine. It is vector, so it's something that I can live with. Um, so once I'm done with that, um, all that I'm going to do, I can close this palette now, is hit the expand button. And what it's going to do is actually apply um, the actual anchor points to all the paths in this. So basically what I have now is a wireframe vector. If I go to control Y and I see this in a different preview mode, you'll notice that it is vector lines. It's no longer pixels and it can be colored and edited, etc. And now the file size also dropped quite a bit too because it's not building it with pixels anymore. Um, what's really cool about this is your ability to color this almost like a paint by number. Um, if you've ever done paint by number. Um, so what, what you end up with is the, all the white areas are basically cells. So after I've hit expand, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and hit ungroup. And that's going to break apart my, my pieces and then allow me to go in and, and color things. So what I usually do after I do the image trace, that's basically how you do the image trace, is now how do you add color to this. Um, and one of the easy ways to do it is you can go in and select the paint bucket tool or the live paint bucket tool um, which is middle of the path here if you click and hold if you can't see it if you see shape builder for example you can click and hold this go to live paint bucket and it's telling me I can click anywhere in here while the image is selected it has to be selected the all the paths have to be selected and it says if you look closely click to make a live paint group so I can click in any of these areas where it's white and it will convert the entire area I have selected into a live paint group so I'm just going to start on her sleeve and click once and you'll not notice anything except that now every time I hover over one of these cells, Illustrator is reading that as a separate and closed area that I can fill color in. So now this is where the really cool stuff happens. If I want to add a skin tone, for example, to her face, I can hover over that and you'll notice just in the upper left portion of the paint bucket is a little arrowhead. And that's actually the tip of this particular cursor, not where the bucket is pouring out paint. And so I'm going to go in. I opened up a swatches palette called Skin Tones, which you can find by default by going up here. And uh, I'm sorry, up to your uh, uh, swatches. Yeah, your swatches options and add to the swatches or load swatches. And one of them is called Skin Tones. So anyway, I brought up my Skin Tones. And let's say I give her a little bit lighter skin tone. I just hover over that and I just click once and it'll apply that skin tone to it. So I can go in and do that to the areas where her skin is showing. And if you need to zoom into areas, you can do that too. There's her some skin tone on her stomach and maybe on her neck area here. And so I'm just going to continue to do that. If I want to make her hair, maybe, you know, this bright blue color, sort of a, an anime, sort of a, a look to it, I can do that. So um, I'm just kind of bouncing around here and applying the different colors that I want now. And it, has gone from a drawing into a actual vector. So a very quick way to go in and um, do something without having to use the pen tool um, and turn it very quickly into a vector drawing if you've done a very good tracing and you've inked it ahead of time. So this will be a, a good lesson for you to get to know how to do before you move into the, the mini boss quest, which is going to be uh, how to do uh, a name logo. So we'll see you back in that next uh, video. Um, in a little bit. Bye, guys.